Till now, we have looked at strain field and stress fields around dislocations. We have also seen what is an elastic strain energy around dislocations. Now, we will be studying what are the implications of these stress fields and strain field. Now, let's understand what is strain hardening when we talk about dislocation stress fields. So, we have got introduced to this term when we discussed about stress strain curves, engineering stress strain curve. So, we have stress which is plotted on y axis and strain which is on an x axis. And we have seen this is a linear region which is an elastic region and it is given by Hooke's law sigma is equal to E into epsilon. And we have seen this as a plastic region which is a non linear region and we have defined this region mathematically by sigma is equal to k epsilon to the power n. Here we have got introduced to strain hardening. So what is strain hardening? You can see that as I am increasing strain, there is an increase in a stress. So this increase in plastic strain, let me be very specific, when, when I increase a plastic strain, there is increase in stress. So I can call it as a very, there is an increase in flow stress with increase in a plastic strain. So this phenomena is called as strain hardening or sometimes it is also referred as work hardening. So it is called a strain hardening or a work hardening that is an increase in strain with strain. So there is something called as strain softening also. Let me write it down. So with increasing plastic strain, there will be decrease in the strength of a material. So that is called as strain softening. Here we are looking at why strain hardening occurs for when we go on increasing the strain or a plastic strain on a material. So we have defined the strain hardening rate that is theta is equal to d sigma upon d epsilon that is a measure of a strain hardening in a material. So when we say strain hardening, basically what we mean that d sigma upon d epsilon is greater than zero. Let us understand this. So when I have a small increment in strain, there will be an increase in stress. And this increase in stress is in a such a way that d sigma upon d epsilon is greater than zero. Why we need uh, this strain hardening or what is its importance? So we need this for a construction industry where you have a twisted bars which leads to an increase in strain or when we cold roll sheets, you, if you keep rolling sheets, the strength of the sheets increases. So why there is an increase in the strain when we increase a plastic strain on a material? or when there is a work hardening or when we work a material, why there is an increase in strength? So this is the question we have to answer. So strain hardening not only has some advantages, it has a disadvantages where we increase in strength and there is a decrease in ductility. So this kind of thing is called as in mechanical behavior as strength ductility trade-off. So we will use this term or this is a conundrum. So we, you will find this strength ductility trade-off term which is being used. That means when I try to increase strength, there will be decrease in ductility or when I try to increase ductility of a material, there will be decrease in the strength. So simultaneously increasing strength and ductility is a challenge. So let's get back to a question where why there is an increase in the strength of a material. So let's look at in terms of a dislocations. So dislocation causes plastic flow. As we all know, we have seen that when a dislocation moves, there is a plastic flow in a material. And it also explains a discrepancy in theoretical shear strength and experimentally observed shear strength. So when I talk about a strength of a material, when there are dislocations, there is it decreases the strength of a material also. So here in this case we can see that when there are no dislocation 
the material will reach to theoretical shear strength but when there are dislocation it brings out the energy required to cause a slip so in other words what i can say is that easier the motion of dislocation less is the amount of stress required and thus we can say that when i impede dislocation motion when i stop dislocations from moving i can increase the strength of material or and thus i can decrease adductility which we have discussed here so dislocation motion causes increase in the ductility or plasticity of a material while when we stop or impede the motion of dislocation it increases the strength so now we will be looking at strain hardening and dislocation interactions so here the first case we are looking at dislocation interactions so we know that plastic strain is related to mobile dislocation density into burgess vector and average distance at dislocation are traveling so we have this plastic strain related to mobile dislocation density now let's consider if b and x bar are constant so when i increase a plastic strain let us write it down that also when i increase plastic strain it implies that rho m should increase if b and x bar are constant so you can say that when plastic strain increases there is will be there will be dis dislocation density increase so you have mobile dislocation density which increases with increase in a plastic strain and you know that the dislocation have stress fields around them and thus the stress fields will interact and thus this when the stress field interacts with each other it can affect the motion of or a movement of dislocations now let's understand this dislocation interaction in more detail which leads to a strain hardening in materials so let's say you have two dislocations let us mark our coordinate axis first x and y and i have a dislocation which is at 0 0 position here and i have another dislocation which is at certain distance from this dislocation 1 let us name these dislocations that this is a dislocation 1 with a bias vector v1 and this is a dislocation 2 with bias vector v2 and for simplicity just consider this bias vectors are equal for this both dislocations as b so b1 equal to b2 equal to b and let us see that this dislocation 2 is at a distance h along y direction from dislocation 1 so this is along y direction this plane a glide plane for dislocation 2 is at a h distance apart from glide plane 1 now we know that these are h dislocations we are considering so let's we know that the stress field around a dislocation can be given as using these equations we are trying to find out what are dislocation interactions so let's consider a stress field around this dislocation 1 to be given by sigma xx sigma yy sigma zz and tau xy and tau yx so we know that an edge dislocation will have a stress field which has both uh, hydrostatic components and deviatoric components too we have seen this we have seen this equations many times now let's see what is a Burgess vector here so we have marked our coordinates and the Burgess vector will be given as v100 because it is directing towards x direction positive x direction so we can say that Burgess vector will be v100 similarly the tangent vector will be along z direction so we can say that the tangent vector as 001 so the c direction is perpendicular to the screen so we have by just vector tangent vector and we have stress uh, field around this dislocation now we have to find out a dislocation interactions that is an interaction between a dislocation 1 and 2 so what does that mean that the stress field around dislocation 1 will cause or will affect the dislocation 2 and so that means the stress field of dislocation 1 will act on a 
dislocation too. And when we have this kind of stress state, we use pitch coulomb equation to understand what is the force acting on this dislocation too because of the stress field. So we have a stress field around one, which will cause a forces acting on dislocation two. And let's understand using pitch coulomb equation. So we have pitch coulomb equation. We have this schematic mentioning two dislocations and we have the stress field. So according to pitch coulomb equation, you have the force per unit length of a dislocation can be given as sigma p cross t. Now here sigma is nothing but you have sigma xx, sigma y by sigma zz. So you have sigma xx, sigma y by sigma zz and you have tau xy, tau yx and other shear stresses like tau xz and tau yz are zero. This we have seen when we figured it out what is a stress field around an NH dislocation. So let's find out what is sigma dot b and what you get is that sigma dot b is equal to sigma xxp tau yxp and 0. So this is what we get as sigma dot b. Now let's find out what is sigma b cross t is. So we get fl as so when we solve this determinant. So this is our tangent vector t and this is our sigma dot p. And we solve this, what we get is a fl as that is force per unit length of a dislocation as tau yx bi minus sigma xx bk. So let's now put this tau yx value here in this equation and sigma xx value from here in this equation. So when I, when I do that, I can find out what is fl and fl comes out to be you have this term which is tau y x and pay attention that here y is h so we are replacing y with h and you can say that this force so this is this is along i so this is nothing but along x direction so this force is nothing along x direction so this will be our glide force so this will be our glide force and this is sorry this, this should be there if there is a mistake here so this should be j here so this this is a j here and thus this becomes a climb force now let's look at these interactions of dislocations so we have this scenario where the stress field of dislocation one is interacting or causing forces on dislocation 2 which will cause glide or climb force is acting on this dislocation and we have figured it out that the force per unit length on this dislocation because of the stress field of dislocation 1 is this and we have figured it out this has to be a glide force and a climb force and thus here if you look at the climb force which was acting along j that is along y direction and you can see that h is positive here so h is positive here and here all the terms were for positive x you can say that the climb force or for all x you can say that the climb force is along positive y direction so you have a climb up of this dislocation so you have climb force which is acting along y direction and this is on the upside so this is this dislocation will climb up so the stress field around the dislocation one causes a climb force which will move this dislocation up so it has a positive climb uh, force which is acting on dislocation two now let's look at glide force so for that let's plot x and a glide force along y direction and you can see that if we want to find out what is a glide force on dislocation 2 because of stress field of dislocation 1 you can say that the glide force will be 0 when x equal to 0 so if i have x equal to 0 this glide force will turn out to be 0 so let's mark this point here the glide force will be 0 Similarly, you can see this term which is x square minus h square. 
so when x equal to h whether positive or negative this fl which is uh, or what i can say the glide force will be zero so for x equal to h or x equal to minus h the glide force will be zero let's mark these two points too so we have h here and minus h here where glide force will be zero so these are the three points where glide force turns out to be zero now let's look at some conditions and find out what can be a glide force so let's look at this condition where x is in between 0 and h so x is in positive direction but less than h so that means here x has a positive sign and but x is less than h that means the glide force will be negative so we have glide force let us write down so you have glide force to be going in this way and you can clearly see that from this relation for certain x this glide force will be negative and reaches a maximum for a certain value of x and thus for other conditions let's let's look at this glide force again so you have glide force to be negative for x between 0 to h now for x between minus h to 0 so you have x to be negative here and x is less than h that means this term also will be negative x square minus h square will be negative negative and negative will become positive so you have glide force to be positive when x is between minus h and 0 so we have glide force to be positive here so let us mark that also so glide force will move here and because of the nature of this expression you can say that it reaches a maximum value of glide force positive value and it will start decreasing so it will have this maximum value for glide force for x between 0 and minus h so likewise you have maximum for glide force that is will be negative direction for x between 0 to h and when x is greater than h you can say that this term will be positive and this is positive so fl glide will be positive so you have a positive glide force let us mark here so you have positive glide force in this direction when when i have a x greater than h now let's see how this glide force we can plot it so you can plot glide force for positive x in this way so this is what i meant so you have glide force to be negative for 0 less than x and less than h and it will reach us, reach some maximum value on the negative side and the nature of the glide force variation with respect to x is in this fashion and also from this relation you can see that as i increase x and it tends to infinity you can see that the glide force will reach to max for certain value of x and then it starts decreasing and it will decrease as I x tends to infinity similarly you can get the similar variation for glide force which is acting on dislocation 2 because of the stress field of dislocation 1 and let's let's plot that too also so you get a variation of glide force with respect to x which with respect to x on the negative side and you can see that it, it is a positive glide force when ha x has a value between minus h to 0 and for all x uh, in the negative direction the glide force will be negative and it is also start becoming positive when x is tending to infinity in the minus infinity so this is a variation of glide force what does this mean actually so when i say that when i try to move this dislocation uh, or dislocation 2 on this glide plane you will have this dislocation 2 will experience this kind of a glide force on uh, this this kind of a glide force on dislocation 2 will be exerted by stress field of a dislocation 1 now let's look at another scenario where you have 
a positive edge dislocation here and you have a negative dislocation over here. So for this kind of scenario, here the glide force for, let us, let us write it here. So here in this case, what we got FL as GB. So here in this case, we can write that B2 is minus B1 and thus we can say that it will be minus B and it has the same terms like and similarly here also you can write it as minus B 2 pi 1 minus mu h 3x square plus h square upon x square plus h square whole square and you can look at these relations now when I when I change the sign of this dislocation on this glide plane 2 so here you can see that the climb force will be negative for because h is positive x is positive for all x this climb force will be negative and let us mark that climb force so you have negative climb force and it will act here and it will move this dislocation in this direction and let's find out a glide force so glide force will be exactly a mirror of this glide force which you can see for two positive edge dislocations on parallel slip planes and you can see the glide force variation for opposite sign dislocations so this is positive edge dislocation this is negative edge dislocation on two parallel slip planes so you have a glide force on this negative edge dislocation because of the stress field of this positive edge dislocation will vary in this fashion and similarly you can say that for negative x you have glide force to be varying in this fashion so you can see that the stress field of dislocation 1 is interacting with dislocation 2 and causes a glide force and climb force on dislocation 2 and thus it affects its movement or motion and we'll be looking at what are the stabilist configuration based on these interactions between these two dislocations and we'll be looking at this and try to explain why we get strain hardening because of these interactions in the next part and here i'll stop